Hello, good afternoon. Good Sunday afternoon, everyone. My name is Ramesh, and I welcome you to today's session of Orange Tea and Thai's Consumer Empowerment Webinar. Property hunters tuning in may be interested to know that despite all that is going on in the world currently with the COVID-19 situation, our local property market has grown to be buoyant and resilient. Our recent analysis showed that just in the last two months, there were close to 500 new sale transactions done virtually. It's really quite exciting to see how fast our local buyers adapt to new technology to buy properties online and also embrace new ways of gaining knowledge to aid their decision-making process. Orange Tea's Consumer Webinar Series is one of our key new initiatives that empowers potential property buyer or seller out there, the latest market news and trends right from the comforts of your home. Our carefully selected speakers in the series will be sharing with you key insights and latest research in the property market to help you make informed and prudent decisions in your future property plans. It's great to see so many listeners tuning in to our webinar this afternoon. Thank you all for taking time off to join us today. Our esteemed speaker for today is none other than Perry Xiao, Associate Executive Director at Orange DNT, also an ACTA certified trainer. Perry's real estate career began in the year 2000 where he joined the industry as a rookie and emerged the top salesperson in his agency that very same year. In his experience of 20 years, Perry has seen through several cycles of the real estate, which have been both positive and negative on the property values in Singapore. He plays an active role in helping his clients strategize their property portfolio, maximize returns and cut loss where required. You would also be intrigued to know he was recently featured by the Straits Times investment section, sharing his experience on how to manage good debts and bad debts. The topic Perry will be covering today is Payaleva Master Plan Transformation, and he will be sharing with you how to identify the right blue chip property investment, how can you benefit from it to ride through the storm, and how the principle of GRC can help property investors to make a more informed decision. A gentle reminder for listeners tuning in, if you have any questions pertaining to the talk or the property market in general at any point during the session, all you have to do is click on the Q&A option at the bottom of the screen and type in your questions. We will be having the Q&A session at the end of Perry's talk, but you can start keying your question at any time. We have a send by a panel of real estate veterans and experts to answer all your burning questions. You can also direct your questions to Perry, which we'll be taking after the presentation. I'm sure all of you are waiting eagerly for the talk to start. So without any further delays, over to you, Perry Sia. Thank you, Ramesh. Thank you. Um, thank you everyone for coming on board and tuning in the, during these sessions. Thank you so much. Now, um, I'm gonna run through with you some of the, my personal observations and experience that I uh, have in the past in the Pileva Master Plans. So let's kick start. Let's get going. Okay, um, I just want to flash this as a disclaimer for the first page. Now, um, if you guys actually can recall, um, can remember in the year 2013, actually the Lee Sien Long, uh, our PM Lee, uh, did mention about the two, one of the major both movements plans that are going to happen in Singapore. So what's going to happen in uh, of these two both movements? The two movements, one of the movement is Singapore, in, uh, we, we are shifting our Pileva airbase to um, other uh, locations. Then the other one is uh, Tanjo Baga container ports move to Tuas. So these are the two key movements. Of course, we do understand uh, Singapore, we do have many plans that we want to do a uh, certain part of our estate, in certain part of our district in terms of trans all the transformations. Now, so uh, Paliba, where are they going to shift to and uh, what they intend to do to free out these 800 hectares for new homes, offices, and factory. So same thing goes to uh, Tanjong Paga is to free out the prime land. As we all know that Singapore, we don't have much land and our country is, is kind of small and this is as much size as we can grow. So we have to free out certain part of the land for uh, the mass. Now, just for your uh, general history purpose, do you know what's Paileba in the uh, uh, original word stand for? Which is in 1980s to early 1990s, uh, these are the words of Paileba. So subsequently, they shortened it to call uh, Paileba. Then in Malay, it's called Swam and White. Now, so let's 
let's talk about uh, Pailaba Air Base and uh, so called Pailaba uh, Central. So, there's two things that government actually plans to do, and one is to actually to free out the Pailaba Air Base, and one is uh, Pailaba Central. So, we uh, talk about this Pailaba Air Base first. Now, one of these uh, Pailaba Air Base, before the uh, Pailaba Airports, Airports began the, for the operations, so it was used for commercialized in Kalan Airport, which is opened on the 12th of June in 1937. So then subsequently, um, they, they moved towards the, to Pailaba Airport, and which is in 1955. And uh, this is where the, all the international airlines come to Singapore for the last 26 years. Then subsequent, in 1981, Chinese Chinese Airport was built, and uh, that's when the whole movement of Pailaba uh, Airports moved to a Chinese Airport. And then after that, it converted into the military air base. So that's a, a brief history. So now Paliba uh, planning, they have a four sub zone, which is uh, some of the uh, east zone, north zone, and the west zone. Now we are talking about this land is about 800 hectares, um, which means to say it's translated into, let's say uh, in terms of square meter, is about 8 million square meter. So if you go to uh, translate into a uh, square feet, so it's going to be about 86 million square feet. So that's how huge the land is. And uh, that's the whole entire plans that government uh, intend to free out this whole entire air base. Now where actually the air base is going to relocate to? So it's going to relocate to the Chinese air base. So this is the Chinese air base. Then here is actually the master plans under URA. And uh, so this is actually the um, artist impressions, the earlier stage, the plans that they intend to do much of transformation. Right in the center here, you can see this is actually the one, the uh, a huge round way. So this will be more into a recreation activities and uh, left and right will be slated for commercial, industrial and residential as well. Then uh, this is the whole entire, you're gonna call it as a wrong way boulevard. Then now, interestingly, which I uh, personally did my sum of calculations is like, so if you notice how big this air base is going to be like is, we are talking about five times Topayo towns. So now five times of Topayo towns here indicates like how, what is the population right now in the Topayos. So right now the Topayo towns, we are talking about 120,000 uh, populations. Then uh, if you are talking about the five times, we meaning to say, Potentially, this whole entire air base could have yield to 600,000 population people are living in. Meaning to say, it's as good as in Tampines town, the population is about 256,000. So we are talking about two, two, more than two times of Tampines towns. So this is how huge the uh, populations and uh, like actually governments intend to uh, plan the next generation of township. Then of course, what's the benefit uh, for uh, the air base of being lifted up or being moved? And uh, the, the zoning, the height restrictions will be uh, lifted up as well. And uh, so currently we all know that uh, in the east area, in the Pongo, and some of the aircraft taking off and landing, right? So you can hear the certain sound. So this will be clear, uh, those kind of air po uh, noise pollution, as well as the restriction for the height uh, will be uh, lifted up as well. Now, so that's actually the one of the movement. In the Singapore overview, you can see the one the huge lens in the green, dark green color, that's actually a Pailiba Air Base. It's going to move to the east regions. And same thing goes to the uh, Tanjo Baga, the port containers, it's going to move to the Tuas as well. So this is actually one of the long-term plans. Uh, it's going to take another 10 to 20 years and for that movement to come. Now, so, so much more about the Pailaba Air Base. You know, then the next another projects that actually the government intend to do, which is to build right now, mean to say it's an immediate project, is a Pailaba Central. So what is Pailaba Central? So under the URA 2008 uh, Master Plan Guidelines, so uh, gate, along the gate lines is earmarked to develop into a commercial hub. So Pailaba is going to uh, have a future commercial center, meaning to say it's going to, to have a mix of office, retail, and hotel developments. So now let's let's join these two together in terms of air base. Now currently this is actually where the air base here is and which is the future plans um, after 2030 for the air base to move or uh, relocate. Uh, the new generation of townships we are talking about uh, 600,000. And uh, so now let's say if we know that uh, current, currently, our population is uh, 5.7 million. So on white paper, 6.9 million 
by the year 2030. So we are talking about the differences is about, about 1.2 million uh, in terms of populations coming in. So that actually kind of makes sense that's um, why the government want to, uh, re, uh, to free out this air base. Now, if we take, uh, let's say, uh, the short distance to the uh, Pailaiba Central, so it's just only uh, seven minutes, about 4 km, seven minutes drive to the Pailaiba Central. Now, that's actually where the Pailaiba uh, uh, interchange is. That's where uh, the connection between the east-west line and the uh, circle line. Now, the, the thing is, why government want to focus so much on the Pailaiba Central? Now, the thing is, like, can you imagine, let's say, um, people who live in Tampanese, work in the CBD, people who live in Simei, work in the CBD, live in Pongo, work in CBD, and uh, live in Sengkan and work in CBD area. So now, let's say people who live in the air base, Pailaiba air base, and work in CBD. And our CBD area is going to be very jam-packed. So it's going to be overcrowded. And of course, the rental will be uh, high. And um, we might not be able to attract uh, our foreign uh, company to, to, uh, to set the headquarters here and due to the higher uh, office rents. So government, the next pilot plans, which is they, they announced is to do the decentralization to dominate the office markets, to bring jobs to, near to uh, your home. So that's actually the next uh, plans, which is we are talking about the next 10 years. And uh, so from the article that was announced 2018, then we are talking about the next uh, 10 years will be 2028. Now, um, so this is actually the overview and the blue color zone is under the commercial area. And uh, so this is actually our traditional CBD area. And now we already have in the Tampanese as well as the uh, Woodlands. And we also have a drone uh, lake district. Yeah, so this is actually a couple of few uh, uh, plans that actually government intends to uh, open up for the CBD. And same goes at the Pailiba Central. So now, question here is, why choose Pailaiba Central? Why choose Pailaiba the area there? So it, in this article, it mentions um, the reason why government choose the Pailaiba is it is because it's a close proximity to the traditional CBD area and also to Chinese Airport. So Pailaiba is kind of like in the middle, in the cent uh, center area. So it's between like two, both uh, state stations. Then of course, um, if you hear from uh, our PMD, they mentioned again on the 2018, and uh, the, he did mention say that uh, in, to do more transformation and to plans to make the place even more vibrant and special. That's the, actually uh, from his work. Now what is a now and then on the Pileva Central? So you can see the master plans in the 2003, the master plan on the left side. And uh, this used to be, uh, industrial area, uh, B2, B1 industrial area. In the past, I used to went, uh, send my car for service. Yeah, then now today, the Paliba, it become all the yellow zone. Okay, so this is actually under the government reserve lands. And so here will be the Paliba Central. Now this is actually the uh, URA, the blueprints, and uh, where they're gonna mark in the whole entire Paliba Central. And right now, currently, this is actually the MRT station here and uh, followed by the PLQ mall and the commercial hub. And this land will be a uh, reserve land and currently it's empty. And of course this will be empty land. And uh, so this will be the whole entire perimeter is gonna be a Pailaiba Central. Now in today's Pailaiba, so what do we have here? Now in today's Pailaiba, um, we have like a couple of few shopping mall. Uh, Kinex is actually at uh, 1 km. Uh, shopping mall, then uh, MRT is here, then followed by the PLQ mall, Pailipa Square, and Sing Post, all cluttered in together. So of course, there will be more rooms for expansion, and uh, this is just only a uh, beginning. Then there'll be more room for expansion, which is under the reserve lands here. Now, so now we know that Pailipa, there are two key transformation in the pipeline. So these are the two key, which is one of it is actually the air base. Then the air base will uh, come to a transformation will be taking place after 2030. The other one will be a little bit more immediate, which is uh, currently we are talking about a Pailaiba Central. So now uh, if you go to Pailaiba area itself, you are able to see most of the shop, uh, mega mall and uh, commercial hub, they are there already. Now the question here is like, 
how can you benefit to tap on the following wave? How can you benefit on the government growth? And like example, MRT, shopping mall, and CBD area. So this type of property, it, it, it seems like if you want to tap on this, uh, the government wave, this type of property, it seems like you can only find in the central CBD area, okay? But now let me just give you uh, some of the highlights, and which is generally most of the buyers actually when they buy a, a property. So when they buy a property, so common things that um, usually buyers when they look out for a property is either they buy some buy a property near MRT station or near school. School basically for their children. And that's pretty com quite, quite common and, uh, for today's, nowadays, the buyers. Then either um, second type of buyers would be like buy, buy MRT, near MRT station, near school, of course, near a bit of shopping mall. And uh, so that would be a little bit um, not bad in a way I feel that it's quite good. And the third type of buyer is like, okay, um, what if, let's say, can I find uh, MRT near school, near shopping mall, and near commercial area? So this kind of uh, the location, sometimes I would say pretty hard to find, um, but most of the time you can find usually is in the central district area, like uh, CBD, Marina uh, area. So this will be a great, will be an ideal choice to buy uh, somewhere because you can see the potential growth and the potential yield. Now the next question here is like, how about can we find a property like near MRT, near school, three shopping mall, one commercial area, and including government doing the transformations? So this kind of property, why actually I personally and me and my clients, we consider this type of property, if we can find in the market, this considered as a blue chip property. So blue chip property um, is hard to come by and uh, it's something that you need to, we need to like do a little bit more research, a little bit more fact findings. So let, what is the, the research and fact finding that I actually have found out? Okay, let me, before I start, uh, let, let us define what is a, a blue chip property uh, stand for. And in fact, the uh, blue chip is just derived from the uh, stock market. And uh, we know that uh, under a couple of few blue chip company, which is under STI uh, components. So let's say I, I quote example, uh, DBS, DBS Bank is under a blue chip company. And people will buy DBS number one because they, uh, they know that DBS is a growth company. Okay, it's a growth bank. Number two, DBS pay a very good return, which is the dividends. Okay, number three, DBS actually are uh, sustainable. So people tend to like uh, buy and hold and uh, uh, they will feel that, okay, this, this bank won't collapse. I mean, it's not say 100% it won't collapse, collapse but I mean, it does a uh, so-called able to buy to hold for long term. Number four, so we are talking about liquidity. Liquidity in the stock market is very, very important, very, very crucial, something that you want to buy in easily and something you can sell easily as well. So you don't buy a stock that illiquid, whereby you buy, but you couldn't sell. Number five, reputable in terms of reputations. Uh, iconic band, local band. So the minute, let's say example, you, if you uh, meet any of your friends, they will say, that, hey, I actually own a DBS stock. So they know, I mean, DBS is actually one of the blue chip, uh, uh, company, one of the blue chip stock. Okay, so that's that's how it, it goes in terms of the blue chip. And uh, now, how can I? How do we translate these five pointers into a property into to this property as part of the blue chip property, so that you know that uh, to what are the things to keep a lookout. So number one, buying a property offers uh, to to us is kind of like we want to have a confident growth. That means we want to buy something that uh, we. The minute we input our money here, we are able to see there's appreciations. I mean, in the near future. Number two, we are talking about a good return. So instead of buying to sell after five years, most likely we think that I want to buy maybe for rental purpose. Then that will give me a, a dividends or rather a yield returns. Number three, sustainability, long term. So holding for long term, and uh, will my property appreciate over the years? Number four, liquidity. So liquidity is, we are talking about volume and, and as well demands. Now why liquidity in property is so important? Because personally, we have, I see my clients like, when they bought a property and uh, easy to buy in, but the difficult part is like when they're trying to sell. And some, if you ask any of the uh, real estate agents, 
selling my some of the property might take about six months, nine months, some even a year or maybe a two years, and the property is still in the market. Number five, reputable iconic developments. So what are so special these iconic developments is all about? So these are the uh, blue chip assets that uh, personally we classified and uh, they must meet all the criteria. So let's go into what is the point number one. So question here is, of course, is there any blue chip uh, in the market? Now, finding the blue chip property. So let's first, we uh, categorize in terms of uh, MRT station first. Now, my next question to you is, um, can you find an uh, MRT station with a shopping mall? So if you, if you can find a location like an MRT station that's near a shopping mall, I think generally we have uh, many of them. But let me ask you the next question. How about finding an MRT station with three shopping malls? Three shopping malls, not one. One is pretty common, but we are talking about one MRT station with three shopping malls. Actually, not many. So let's go and find out which are the locations that really have one MRT station with three shopping malls. I can tell you it's very red gems. And uh, once you know, and you are able to help you string down which are the property you should target and which are the property you, we think is a blue chip property. So now let's take an uh, example, Tampanis. Yep, Tampanis actually is kind of meet our criteria in terms of the uh, Tampanis MRT station and there's a uh, three shopping mall. Yeah, but unfortunately because Tampanis, there's no nearby lands for a uh, condo residential. So now the question here is, should there be any nearby condo development, development near MRT stations and uh, near MRT, uh, shopping mall, three shopping mall? So um, what will be the price uh, that's selling to, to the public? Then the next one is uh, Jurong East. So Jurong East, we know that uh, Jurong, there's a uh, gem shopping mall, there's JQ, there's Westgate shopping mall and followed by IAM. I am is kind of proximity, so I still take into con considerations. So uh, Jam, Jurong East uh, have a shopping mall and that's, that's, that's made also our criteria. Then the next one, we have like Novena. Novena, one MRT station, there's three shopping malls, which is a Velocity at Novena and the other one is a Novena Square followed by United Square. And uh, last but not least, okay, the next, which is uh, MRT station with three shopping malls that I can find out is a TLQ mall. Kines at X1KM, Simpose, Pilot Bar Square. So generally, these are the four uh, MRT stations that surround by a three, at least three shopping malls. Now, so let's, let's take a look uh, which are the um, nearby um, uh, so-called condo that's near in that facility and locations. In Jurong East, you notice there's this uh, condo called J Gateway. And in um, uh, Novena itself, you also notice there's one condo called Soleil. So of course, Pailiba, we know there's a, a, a property used, used to, the residential used to call the uh, PLQ residentials, residences. Then uh, Tempanis, we know that there's not much land for that. Now let's take a look in the Soleil uh, at Sinara. So the Soleil and Sinara and uh, for the condo. So now the question here is, let's say we, if we want to take this as one of the blue chip uh, property and to buy into it, then uh, we can use this as a one of the gauge as an example. Now this condo is was surrounded by a Velocity, Novena Square, United Square, and followed by Medical Hub, and of course there's good school. So it kind of like meet our criteria. There is one MRT with a school and plus a three shopping mall. Okay, only thing that's um, uh, they don't have uh, near into like a commercial area. The only thing I can think of the commercial area will be the IRAS, like uh, the one the IRAS buildings here. Yep. Then, then let's look into the transactions in the past. In the past 12 months, I saw that people actually sold uh, the Velocity, uh, the Soleil. There's 246 transactions, people are profit from this uh, property. Then of course we talk about total, there's 23 transactions, some of them, a few of them, they are uh, not profit from these transactions. Now we know that uh, why those people, they are not profits. Those people, they are not profit, uh, either they are, uh, over leverage, maybe over gearing, or maybe due to uh, financial distress, or maybe due to a uh, personal issue. So that's why uh, some of the property was like, they have to force to sell for a certain reason. So now if I'm gonna sum out these two, okay, these two together, okay, as a total transaction, you notice 
91% overall of the total transactions make money. They are profited. Okay, so now then the total unit of the Soleil at Sinara is a 417 units. So then the remaining 35% uh, of the residents there, they decided not to sell. Why? They decided to keep. And why do you want to, you know, they decided to keep? After I'll share with you. Now let's look into a gen, uh, J Gateway. So J Gateway, um, we, the MRT station is there. Then uh, this is actually a J Gateway and uh, West Gate and uh, Gem Shopping Mall, they are here. Then we have a nearby Ntien Fong's Hospital. And uh, so that's fulfilled our criteria for the MRT station, school also nearby. Then uh, three shopping mall, hospital, commercial area, and followed by a URA transformation, which is up to today, government is still looking into transforming in the URA uh, in the drone East. Now, um, what are the profitable in the, for the J Gateway people who hold, uh, bought during the launch, which is during the 201617. Uh, then, um, so 46 of them transactions, um, they have made money. Then the other ones, no, one of them, one of the transactions not profitable. Yeah, so let's go to sum up in the total transaction. Overall, is like, oh, the total transactions here is about 97% people are profited. Then now the question here is, J Gateway, there's total 738 units. And uh, we are talking about the remaining of them, they decided to keep this property. Why they keep this property? Because when they keep this property, uh, one of my clients own one of the J Gateway. They say that uh, if they sell, they, they couldn't find any type of location like this with a MRT, near MRT station and three shopping mall. Now, sell already, I can't find this type of property anymore. So now, number one, let's talk about growth. Let's, let's look into uh, some of the fact findings and uh, to find what are the blue chip properties that uh, personally, I feel uh, this will fulfill all our criteria. So number one, when finding a property, uh, the most of the key thing is like, want to find something that have growth potential. And then we are talking about confident entry and also we can look forward for the appreciations. So earlier on, which is I show you on this chart, these are the uh, MRT surrounded by a three shopping mall. Now, these two are already, J Gateway and Solid already TOP and uh, is already on in a resale market. So we are talking about uh, let's say new launch. Now new launch like um, we have Paliba Squares is um, already uh, sold already, and the next week we are talking about uh, Pie Star. So now the question here is uh, why Pie Star, which is opposite the Yunos MRT station. So let me just share with you some uh, uh, facts and figure and uh, some my experience, my observations. Now um, this is actually one of the two zero one one URA. Uh, mention about the pilot bus central so the pilot bus central right now currently we seen is not just only a commercial area and shopping mall there will be more which is the government intend to do which is like retail and hotel and other attractive places here so they are not done yet so what do you think here let's say um the pilot bus this is the commercial area this is actually a commercial area now, what will be the expansion, the spillover, if government going to build more developments here in terms of like commercial or hotel and so on and so forth? What do you think the, um, which part of that Aljunit or maybe the UNOS will benefit? We are talking about UNOS or Aljunit side, the spillover effects. Aljunit side, but we look into Aljunit area, um, surrounding, there's not much of uh, expansion because uh, most of the land already used up for commercial and residential already. Then how about the UNO site? There is a potential and right in front of UNO MRT stations, there's a reserve land in the uh, yellow zone. Yeah, same thing. So that will be a uh, future potential. Now between the Paliba and UNO MRT station, we are talking about a short less than 1km uh, traveling distance. So 970 uh, meter to be exact. So let's say example, if uh, any of the tenants live somewhere around here nearby, so probably they were just like, instead of taking train and buses, uh, which is I saw many of them, what they do is that they scoot over to work or maybe they cycle. So what do you think the, those uh, reserve sites will transform into for this type of lens? 
Now, I don't have any crystal ball for this, like what are the future land, and I don't uh, have any of the clear um, idea what a government would do. But I know because when the government want to free out the land of the air base, and this whole area will be something more attractions to serve the mass people who are in the air base. And of course, I want me to serve the mass in the surrounding area. Now, let's take, take a look here um, in closer to uh, where the park I start here is. This is actually the park I start and one of the developments. And let's take a look and uh, just right opposite the UNOS MRT stations. Now, very interesting here is that we saw this as a yellow zone. And uh, so we're also not sure what can this yellow zone for the future developments. Now, what I have here is uh, some of the fact findings and uh, in terms of what are the lens area and the lens size in, the, in front of the UNOS MRT stations. Now, I personally checked uh, with uh, my, my companies under uh, this uh, MUKIN lot numbers. So the MUKIN area in this lot itself, which is the yellow zone here, is about 33,000 square meter, meter square. Meaning to say, it actually approximately area is about 360,000 square feet. And that's quite a huge size. And uh, then this kind of size is almost equivalent to a park star sizes. Our park star size, the whole entire site plans and uh, site is about 374,000. So this is a 360,000. So the question here is like, what will this 360,000 do? And what will be the possible uh, future de developments? Now, this is actually on the master plans. Now let's take a look in the, the Budok Central, Budok Residences. It was uh, in the year 2003 um, under the yellow zone. Then um, later 2008 was changed to uh, integrated developments. Now, interesting is that look at the site, 268,000. That's a site area. Then we have uh, Sinkang Grants. Formerly, this uh, was a zone under residential. And now it changed to the integrated developments. The site area was 400,000 square feet. Then we have Helium Residences Integrated Developments was in the yellow zone. And uh, now was switched, uh, changed to 2019, become an uh, integrated developments. The approximate, uh, approximately site area was 200,000 square feet. Then the North Park, okay, the North Park formerly because it was a uh, North Point shopping center, and so the site area, the, the label didn't change. It's still under blue color. But later parts, uh, the uh, government decided to convert this area into an integra integration development. So the site area is about 442,000 square feet. Then next one um, is the parseries. Parseries, this used to be a yellow color and uh, residential. So this is near the, to parsery MRT stations. 2019, it changed to a white site and it became a integrated development. So approximately site area is 400,000 square feet. Now, you can look into all the integration developments here. Most of the integration developments, they are sites from as low as, as small as 200,000, 268,000, um, 400,000 to 442,000 square feet. And including pass rates about 408,000. So now what is the site in the UNOS MRT station? It's a 360,000. So just give you an idea, just give you an idea what will that be uh, so-called the potential uh, developments. I mean, uh, nothing is concrete, but at least I know through this fact finding, I know this site potentially can have all the, have the future developments. Then this is to give you some food for thoughts, um, just to share, would you know the old bus interchange be the next transformation to integrated developments? Number two, will the future reserve land tender going to be highly com competitive? Number three, are the future mixed developments um, price going to be cheaper or premium? Number four, the mixed developments not setting, uh, will not setting a new higher benchmark value in the RCR city fringe locations. So what is really a mixed development? So the mixed de uh, integrated development is a shopping mall bus interchange, food courts, supermarkets, police posts and community uh, services, so on and so forth. So that's, um, that's uh, could be 
the potential that um, we personally feel that um, potential transformation in the UNOS uh, MRT station and as well in the bus interchange. Now the question here is, um, am I entering in at the right price? Um, my next question to you is, uh, are you a price buyer or versus are you a value investor? So price is actually what you pay today. Value is what you benefit and enjoy the best over a long-term period of time. So the number one growth, uh, which is we are talking about, let's say we look into some comparison in the past launches in the, the whole entire RCR, REST Central District. And uh, so this is the overall, we are talking about like Park Place, they are selling about 1,009 per square foot, Park Colonial is about 1,008 per square foot, J, J Skate is about 1,007 per square foot plus plus, and uh, uh, Mayfair Modern is about 2,000 per square foot, and Queenstown is about 1,008 per square foot. So you, um, in a way we can uh, see overall in terms of these developments, they are kind of like, they are closer to MRT stations, they are actually pretty much closer to MRT stations. And in terms of per square feet, you can, we can actually safely to say most of RCR right now has achieved the average price of 1,008 to 1,009 per square feet benchmark. So where is the blue chip property? So that's somehow about my number one point on the growth area. So what will be the potential in the UNOS area? Now then number two, Okay, we are talking about good returns, which is the rentability and you. So where are the pool of the tenants coming from? Now in the past, uh, in the East Coast, in the East area, most of our pool of tenants came from central CBD area and as well China business park, which is nearby the airport area. So these are the uh, main or the pool tractions uh, tenants were live close by in the Geylan and also East Coast, those area. Then of course, when the Pali bar uh, was opened up as uh, in, in the change to Circle Line, then we do attract some of the people who work in Novena and we uh, Kalan Lifestyle Hub and as well as the PLQ. So you know just needs to the PLQ more. So let's take a look at PLQ more. These are the uh, more that's up and run, not something that we're talking about. Potentially it will uh, build into more or commercial area. So where are the pool of tenants that are coming from? So this is the uh, commercial area. So this is actually one of the commercial area needs the PLQ and uh, commercial building. And this commercial building is not an ordinary commercial area or uh, commercial buildings. Uh, what this, this is a commercial grade A office. So what is actually a grade A office? So there's a, a few conditions just to uh, share with you what are the conditions to fulfill as a great office buildings? So number one, one of the conditions here is to fulfill as a great office is, um, it must be a prime locations near MRT stations and so easy transport access. Number two, the building must have an MNC international and brand companies as a tenants. Number three, the developer must be, must owned by a developer, like example, like Capital Land, Land Lease, Fraser Center Point, CDL, so on and so forth. And in, make sure it mustn't sold to any of the individual owner. So if let's say uh, any of the uh, development the office space that uh, the sales, sales rep trying to sell to you say, hey, you buy this office uh, uh, space and this is actually the whole building is considered as a grade A office. No, that's not a grade A office. That is actually uh, a grade B and also a grade C office. So number four, the floor, the floor plates of the building must be at least about 20,000 square feet. So 20,000 square feet, we are talking about uh, you, places you can find in the MBFC, PLQ, Marina One, and Asia Square. So number five, building must be designed by well-known architects and the most important must, must, most important must be certified under the green buildings. Number six, it must be, have a top level of security system and uh, with an access card. So this is pretty much standard 24 uh, CCTV. So these are the criteria that fulfill um, conditions as a great A office. So the next question here is uh, what are the profile of the tenants that are going to rent from you? So these are the profile of the tenants that is not potentially, potentially they are coming, they are already in, in the commercial CBD area, which is in the uh, PLQ. 
So these are the international uh, companies that you will, uh, you will be renting to them. So we are talking about there will be a strong pool of confirmed international tenants just next to you. Then not just only uh, for the business class, executive class that you rent to them, you also rent to people who are nearby the international school, such as like Canadian International School, Odyssey, the preschool as well, James Cook University, and so on and so forth. So now let's sum up uh, some of the initial U, and now we are talking about the point number two, which is a good return. Then uh, currently, which is I pull out the, this are some of the rental asking price in the PLQ mode. Then, uh, so we are talking about the rental is 2005 per month to 2008. So let's uh, look into what are the initial U. So example, if the unit um, that currently we have is 1566, 420 uh, square feet. So prices is about 818,000 and we are talking about one bedroom. So what is the potential U and what's the potential returns? So our rental is about 2005 uh, the rental per month. So we are talking about 30,000 per annum. So this one will give you a rough, rough estimation, the initial rental yield, which is 3.6%. Then of course, let's look into the, the two of the champion condo, which is I earlier mentioned, the Soleil and uh, J Gateway. Now we'll use that as a benchmark. This condo that surrounded by the three shopping mall, school, and multi station and medical and commercial area. So when I pull out these charts, you notice they are one of the top transactions in the district. So meaning to say Soleil is actually one of the highest rental volume in the market. We are talking about 183 KVR in district 11. So um, then subsequently we have like other condo, trillions, part Evenia, and so on and so forth. So that gives us an idea like this development, this condo is rentable. And that's give the owner, like when you are the first mover um, that purchased this property and give you a, like, uh, uh, help you generate a monthly rent, uh, returns and revenue for you. Then let's look into the J Gateway as well. J Gateway also one of the highest rental transactions because they have the near MRT station, near school, three shopping mall, medicals, uh, which is hospital, commercial area, and followed by a URA uh, transformations. So it's one of the top uh, champion rental condo in the markets. So the highest rental transactions we are talking about, 340 KVR in Jurong East. So where is the blue chip property today? So i have talked about the number two, which is the rentability. And now let's move on to number three. We are talking about uh, sustainability in the long term and uh, live, work, and play. Now in the uh, Yunos area, uh, part is just right across to Yunos MRT stations. And we are looking into like Tampines, we are taking about five stop to train station and Changi Airport is about five stop. Then to the stadium like Sport Hub is about four stops. Then Marina Bay Sands is about seven stop MRT stations. Then followed by Boogie is about five stop. And Raffles Place is one of the east-west line and without any change of the train, without any transit. So we are talking about seven stop. Then to the Orchard MRT, nine stop. Of course, to Dobbygo itself, will be a seven stop. Then, um, so not just only in the opposite, the UNOS MRT stations, part itself opposite UNOS MRT station, and we also for, we are talking about four minutes drive to the hospital, Parkway East Hospital. Then um, next we have about five minutes to a PIE and East Coast Parkway, ECP to the highway, as well as a East, uh, East Coast Park is about six minute drive to reach the destination for your workout and exercise and so on and so forth for the Singapore Sport Hub as well as the Singapore Expo. So you notice that like, everything is like within like um, kind of like driving distance in every part of the destination that you want to go. So let's identify what are the future land potential, the developments under the master plan stats near MRT stations. So that will give you an idea. It's like when you buy near MRT stations, what are the other lands that which is vacant or available? And that will help you what are the future lands is going to build and it's going to beat. So the future land development for the residential near major MRT East Line is actually the very scarcity. 
in the markets. And uh, the RCRs, which is spring to this, um, from Bugis to Kabangans, then from Budo all the way to uh, Pasiris to China Port is the OCR. So the future land developments, let's look into the master plan for the Bugis MRT stations. So surrounded by Bugis MRT stations, uh, we noticed there's not much of land. Of course, recent ones we saw um, there's one of the project development was launched about 2,000 over per square foot. Then the lavender, uh, surrounding the lavender MRT station, there's not much lens. So no more lens for the next developments for residential. Same goes to, now Kalan have one of the vehicle lens right in front of the MRT station. But the question here is like, if this land would go into opens for tender, so what would be the price for, the, for this land? So of course we know that the Singapore land is very scarce. Then the Aljunit, we notice there's no more land in the nearby Aljunit MRT stations. Then uh, next, we have Paliba. So same thing, Paliba, we don't have much nearby land except we have the future potential sites, which is under the reserved lands here. The next, we have the nearest the new nose MRT stations, which is uh, the Park Esta. Now the Kambangans, um, Kambangans, we have the vacant lands right in front of MRT stations what will be the future price? So that's also a next question is like, um, in future, if they go to open for tender, what will be their future price? Budo, okay, there's no much lens. Um, uh, Budo residences are really sold out, fully sold out already. Then uh, Tanamera, uh, we have recent one, which is the land just opened for tender two weeks ago, and uh, just wait for uh, developments, the developers for bidings. Then the Expo MRT stations, um, we don't have not much land and subsequent like Simei, Tampanese and Pasiris, we, the land was just awarded to all green. So now let's take a look at uh, the Tanima Kachus was just opens for tender, which is on the May 28th. Now this is just, um, the result is not out yet and we'll just look at what the analysts actually say. So the analysts say that uh, this actually opened tender for a site could attract about 5 to 10 bits from the major developers. So the big range we are talking about 840 to triple 800,000 per square foot per plot ratio. So now you, you will notice in the part start, our land was formerly, uh, uh, we were awarded this land in the year 2016-17. And guess what? How much the land that we bought? So now this is just only an uh, analyst as estimations about uh, triple 800 per square foot per plot ratio. So we are not sure what's the result, but should the land, let's say, be the, at the eight, Cheaper 800 per square feet per plot ratio. So you can roughly do, uh, gauge. Our part star size was bid at about 909 per square feet per plot ratio. That was in July 2017. So we are talking about actually quite close, uh, not much differences, only difference by $21 uh, dollars per square feet per plot ratio. So that's given us an idea. So should the clients, um, they will tend to compare. So if Tanamira uh, condo is going to launch and the price is quite similar like uh, part star in the UNOS area, so generally people will say, oh, uh, I will might as well, I'll buy somewhere near City Fringe. So that's one. Number two, of course, is opposite in the MRT station. Number three, and Pi are also going to be TOP soon in the next two years. So that's what we give you the overall charts, like um, how Kalans and the lands and the Kabangans is uh, vacant, and we will not show what will be the uh, future land price. But we know for sure once they open the lens uh, for, for the for tender, then eventually the land cost is going to be very high. Then subsequently, um, we have like Tanimera and land just open for tenders. Then um, when it's a TOP, will be much more later. Passeries was actually awarded by All Greens and TOP will be much more later. So now Passeries, let's say we take a gauge like uh, in comparison with the Sengang Grand. You notice Sengang Grand actually uh, is integrated 680 uh, residences and followed by retail mall. And uh, total size is about 400,000, 64% swap. And uh, we are talking about their average per square feet right now, they are selling about 1,008 per square foot. So that's actually integrated developments. So what will be the past risk uh, integrated developments will be selling? So we're not sure, but we know that uh, you will not be definitely cheaper. So eventually we will see people actually uh, in terms of per square feet, they will compare the current part star. What is the, the prices? 
So then that's so much about the point number three that I talk about the, the scarcity and the sustainability. Now point number four, which I want to share with you is something called liquidity. So liquidity is important to many of us and because today you want to buy in and you don't want to hold for a long term and eventually when you want to sell as something that you want to find the buyers, the people will come to your unit for the viewing and to make an offer to you. So you want to like sell off your property. So let's take a look in the past uh, top volume, sales volume in the past 12 months. So you notice these are the condo, are the top 10 condo, which I selected are the top highest volume in the past 12 months. So one year they have about 77 transactions sales. Then uh, Minton is about 40, 40 transactions, Deleton about 38 transactions, eight River Street is about 37 transactions per year. Then we also look into the rental volume as well. So the random volume, if you look into the reflections at Keppel Bay, it's about 400 uh, transactions for the rental volume. And so on and so forth for the Minton is about 185 uh, transactions. So this, to me, these two um, are the very healthy condo and this top 10, this condo are very healthy because uh, we have like, people are buying, people are renting uh, this uh, condo. So it's going to show there is a certain demand. People like to leave the place. It could be due to a, a spacious landscaping. It could be a convenient, so on and so forth. So there is a demand. But what you do want to see is an, a condo that's only like one year, only got one transaction. Or one year, maybe say about only five rental caveats or maybe two rental caveats. So this is something that we are talking about, um, condo, which is they are illiquid. So let's look into the, um, those condo, reflections and, um, and maintenance. So these are the total units that they have. Deleted about 1,007. Minton about 1,001 and the 8 River Street is about 800 over. So it's good to show that uh, the bigger the, the total units, the larger the total units, right, you actually attract like sales volume and as well as a rental transaction. So which is, this is a very healthy sign. So if let's say any condo, you have a development only got 10 units. So of course, this will be, um, will be tough and very difficult to, for you to set any benchmark if you want to sell and if you want to rent. So liquidity to us is very um, is equal to volume because if you have liquidity in this developments, meaning you say there's volume and volume to us is equal to demands. There will be people like buying and people like uh, renting in your place. Then uh, also uh, it's also benchmarks that um, you know what are your neighbor they are selling and uh, you are able to easy to gauge and uh, roughly you know like let's say my neighbor is selling at certain price and also want to follow them to sell at certain price. And number three, ease of selling. And as well, it's also one of the form, one of the way of exit strategy. And uh, this is for, because we don't want to, at the end of the day, when you sell the property, you get stuck for six months, you get stuck for the next one year, you get stuck for the next two years. So that's some about the point number four in terms of liquidity. Then the point number five, which is the iconic development effects. So why iconic development effects so important? Now you look into the J Gateway and Soleil and look at their whole developments. Um, many of the time when I bring my clients to either for rent or for buying, we always go past these two condo. And these two condo always, uh, our client told us, asked us one thing, like, what is this condo uh, name? What is it? Uh, when is it TOP? And uh, I want to rent this unit. So it become a very iconic and uh, very visible for our public when they saw the condo right in that area. So why is it actually so important? Um, number one, it gives you a very strong visibility. And uh, so it will become a top of the town and uh, very prominent locations. And that's something that um, we are talking about eye-catching and also large developments in the East City Fringe, modern and the resort design, hotel concept design, posh quality finishes, and also large landscapings. So these are the uh, few key things that why this condo, this development is uh, uh, strong, uh, reputable, and, uh, and it's, it's, it will you'll be the people who live in, you'll see like when your friends saw the, um, the condo that actually you live in, you'll see the whole entire landscape is uh, large and posh. So of course it will be a uh, top of the town. 
So that's some out about my blue chip property. And uh, two example, which is the blue chip property and uh, the property we are talking about growth and uh, confidence, the entry and appreciations. So I just briefly share with you on uh, what are the potential sites for the UNOS MRT. Should the government plans for the PLQ for more expansions, you will know whether the spillover is going toward downward on the Algerian side or maybe the outward to the Euro side. So then that gives you a confident levels what are the future potential is. Then number two, I talk about the good returns, which is the uh, who are your the neighbors, which is the, the company and the, the MNCs, the, the PLQ, the office, and how often you can own a property that needs to you is a grade A commercial office. So we are talking about grade A office building. Then number three, sustainability. You hold for long term. So as you hold for long term, East West Line near MRT actually very, very scarce. And uh, in, in fact, near the MRT, largest condo is even more rare in the market. Liquidity is we are talking about the volume and the demands. So the volume and the demands um they make sure when you sell and when you rent, there is a uh, there's a transactions, there are the people like coming and view your property and there is a demand that people want to rent from you and uh, want to buy from you as well. Then number five, uh, rep reputable iconic developments, something that you own this property and you own this development, something that you can proud of. And every time when the, um, your friend pass, uh, drove past the traffic, uh, they just drove past, they will see hey, this development is somewhere uh, near into a, a Basley and lots of activities going on. So do they have a similarity? Now, in the, let's say we compare in JKW and Park Stars. So let's look into what are the blue chip assets. Now, of course, um, one the number one thing is M, uh, they are situated in the near MRT station. Number two, they do have an international school and a good school surround them. Number three, uh, they have three shopping malls nearby there and surround them as well. Number four, um, they have a hospital that's nearby. So J Gateway have an Intinform Hospital, part of stuff we have a Parkway East Hospital. And number uh, six is a uh, commercial building. So these are the uh, uh, commercial area. Then uh, also it's part of the government URA plans to do lots of transformation and lots of um, makeover in that estate. Now, what else do we have the similarity? A part of this uh, few, uh, the assets, one of the similar things that um, we find out, we also notice is they developed by a same developer called MCL Land. So MCL Land developed uh, J Gateway and sold a couple of uh, few days, sold out within a couple of few days. And now MCL developed uh, part of Star. So you can jolly um, see the Porsche, the finishes that the government, uh, the developer actually developed in J Gateway and same finishes. And uh, that's the quality, the materials that um, they built on the part of Star. Now, I just want to give you some of the summar, uh, summary in terms of the principle of my GRC. So what are the most of the value investor that uh, they keep a lookout for? And these are a few uh, criteria which I help some of my clients when they buy a property. The few questions that I always ask them is, number one is, um, certainly if you buy the property, uh, do you have any growth uh, for the nearby lands that help you, like to pull you up, um, potentially that your land, your property can appreciate? So we are talking about a growth potential in the area, in the vicinity. Number two, um, of course, we are need to calculate in terms of your return on ROI and as well ROE. So return on in, uh, interest and as well return on equity. So just like earlier, I did calculations, a brief calculation is a ROI return on uh, uh, interest and the, the other one is a return on equity. How much when you put in the money and what's your return? Then number three, Connectivities and convenience. Okay, so connectivities and convenience is always are always a key main driving force for the real estate assets class. So in summary, and uh, so Paleba uh, Airbase is actually one of the next generation of the neighborhood after two zero three zero that government has planned for the master plans, uh, which is the new townships is going to take place. And that will serve about 600,000 populations. Then the next one will be the Paya Central, which is a potential uh, site, which is for immediate growth for the next 10 years 
and the transformation in the next decade. Number three, the blue chip property is actually the gem and the red rally come by in the most of the five factors we are talking about uh, growth, return, sustainability, liquidity, and reputa reputations. Number four, the checklist to find out what are the value, valuable property, growth, return, and convenience. Now, last but not least, I just want to sum up uh, these few pointers like in the right time, right place, and right, uh, right people. Now, we, we all know that right now, currently, we are facing in the COVID-19, the situation. So many of the uh, uh, people that do ask, like, well, is it a good time to buy a property right now? And is it, uh, should we like, wait and see and wait and hold or wait for a market to recover? So all this is like kind of um, very uncertainty and we are not sure when the whole situation is uh, going to normalize. So let's say, as, let's say at this moment, we are talking about we are going through the storm and uh, to, to us is every crisis, there's always an opportunity to go in and buy a good property. Now, good property, how to come by? Then uh, we are talking about, let's say, storming for this COVID-19 during this crisis moment for this year. Then the next uh, question here is uh, when will we like start to be back to go back to normal life and uh, like all the like without wearing a mask and go back to normal life. So we are talking about somewhere around two zero normalizing, two zero two one, which is government uh, government did expect uh, next year uh, will be normalized and uh, everybody will back to normal and it will take a, a while for the whole entire economy to recover. Then if you are talking about the economy to recover, we are, we are looking into like performing stage, performing stage which is the 2021 and sorry, 2022. So that was somewhat like 2022 and somewhere we can look into the economy to recover. So now what are the daily in terms of the places, the right place to buy a property? So let's say if you agree with me, the pie is actually one of the blue chip, uh, uh, property, one of the condo developments, they have all the criteria that meet uh, our, as a one of the blue chip criteria. And all you, what you will do is like, the, for the normalized stage itself, is you will, you will just, uh, you will only pay on the progressive payments and as well on the low interest rate. So you will not uh, pay on the full in, uh, installments and uh, everything will be on the progressive side and as well low interest rate. Then, and of course, the key collection that we, should, we can look forward, which is by somewhere around 2022. And uh, this will take you through by the time when you get the key, and that's the moment you can uh, confidently to list out to any of the working class and this PL, people that who work in the PLQ just next to you. So, run her, the right people. So, who will be the right people? So, the right people will be you. Okay, so uh, you'll be the, you make the decisions and uh, you call for the shots for this, uh, these developments. And uh, I think, thank you so much uh, that I have covered uh, most of it. And uh, our next, next speaker like you, uh, would like to invite you for next sessions on uh, Sunday, which is the, one of my colleagues by Harris Wong, a gem that uncuts, uh, talking about transformation of a Bukitima. Thank you.